Hi, I'm Avery Davidson. And I'm Kristen Oakes-White. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. Louisiana farmers know they have to compete on a global scale. Trade agreements and crop conditions half a world away impact commodity prices right here at home. That's why every two years, the LSU Ag Center's Ag Leadership Class takes an international trip to study the agriculture of that respective country. This year, South Africa welcomed the 25 members of Class 14. And joining us now is Twyla's A.J. Sabine, and A.J. pulled the short straw and got lucky to travel with these folks over to South Africa. From what I saw from the blog posts and all the pictures, A.J., it looked like they just enjoyed a lot and learned a lot on that 10-day trip. Well, let me tell you, I've always said it's better to be lucky than good, and South Africa was certainly a fantastic trip. You know, South Africa is beautiful, and it's an amazing country filled with natural resources and incredibly diverse agriculture. Right off the bat, Class 14 learned just how diverse South African agriculture really is during a detailed ag briefing hosted by USDA Foreign Ag Service Senior Agricultural Attaché, Justina Tory. Held at the head office of Cotton South Africa, Tory told the class that the United States exported more than $850 million in ag products to the 11 country region that includes South Africa. Tory then explained that South Africa is highly diversified agricultural wise. The country, which is about twice the size of Texas, produces grain, sugar, citrus, wine, veggies, nuts, as well as aquaculture and forestry products. South Africa is the largest exporter of ag products on the entire continent of Africa. This week, we focus on a soybean, corn and navy bean farming operation located in Delmas, South Africa. Delmas is a small farming town about 55 miles east of Johannesburg, or Jaburg as they say it in South Africa, in the Mpumalanga province. There, Ag Leadership Director Dr. Bobby Swallow introduced Class 14 to Brett Parrott, the General Manager of Schumann Farms. Schumann Farms is a massive 28,000 acre family owned farming operation. In addition to grain products, Schumann produces 33 metric tons of citrus annually. On this stop, Class 14 tours one of two navy bean screening plants located right there on the farm. A slightly jet-lagged LSU Ag Center Class 14 stretches their legs for a bit as they begin a tour of one of two navy bean screening plants on the Schumann Grain Farm. As the class moves inside the plant, Schumann Farms General Manager Brett Parrott explains how air pressure cleans newly harvested navy beans. In the process, we've got the pre-screening, which doesn't take out all the rocks. Okay, that's purely, it's a blowing screen, so you use a lot of wind, it blows off all the trash. Schumann Farms produces 3,500 acres of navy beans here, despite a severe drought that has choked off irrigation in the Dalmas region. Red River Parish Forester Trey Jingles looks over a handful of debris-filled navy beans. Jingles manages 41,000 acres of timberland back home. He says this kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction with South African farmers is why he joined Ag Leadership. The biggest thing for me was the people I was going to get to meet and interact with in our class and then the trips, obviously, um, and then just broadening. It's easy to get pigeonholed or cocoon in your own little world, and mm -hmm. I, I think it's important to get outside of your shell. Back in the screening plant, Parrot explains how these shakers clean out heavier rocks from the heavier, better quality beans. Parrot explains that Schumann produces the most navy beans for canning in this area. Vermilion Parish rice miller Lee Gotcha listened intently as Parrot described his planting season to the class. Gotcha says the size of the farm really impressed her. The sustainability that they're, they can do on the farm where it be, I mean, they work on their own equipment and they fertilize, they make their own fertilizer. Um, I think just how large it is and how they can do so much is pretty impressive. Corn production on the Schumann farm takes up about 62% of the operation. In addition to the corn, these ag leaders jumped at the opportunity to check out these young soybean plants. 
Parrott says it's nice to share knowledge with farmers, which is why he looked forward to the visit from Class 14. It's, it's important for people to understand what we're going through here, um, the problems that we have. I think a lot of people have similar problems uh, in different countries in the world, but um, I think South Africa is very unique in, in the issues that we have and, and, and the way we, we, we run our businesses. In addition to its farming operation, Schumann Farms is completely vertically integrated. The company produces liquid and granular fertilizer through a separate venture, and it also runs a grain handling and storage business. Now, Schumann Farms may handle tons of navy beans around the farm, but local patrons of the Pretoria Farmers Market can find navy beans for sale, as well as tons of fruits, veggies, pastries, and of course, arts and crafts. Every Saturday between 5.30 and 9.30 in the morning, Hundreds of people follow the gravel path through the Pretoria Farmers Market. Members of Class 14, including Tensaw Parish cotton grower Thomas Krigler, perused dozens of vendors selling fresh vegetables and food. Ask Jim Monroe about the braided sausage with the bacon. Absolutely fabulous. From warthog tusk knives to lime trees, the market is a paradise for urban dwellers who want a taste of the countryside. Dozens of hungry customers line up for fresh breads, potted plants, and of course, everything you need for a salad, Avery Davidson, like these English, English cucumbers. Even local musicians busk along the paths of the market to take advantage of the market's eclectic visitors. Vendors like this pastry maker all share a sense of pride not only in their products, but the market as you walk through. And guys, let me tell you, Class 14 got a chance to taste, smell, and interact with some of the folks at the farmer's market, mm -hmm. and they absolutely love it. This trip is just remarkable. Well, I'm glad you remembered how much I love fresh cum cucumbers from our trip to Turkey and fresh salad. But what was really neat about this trip was being able to follow along while y'all were doing it through the Voice of Louisiana Agriculture, the blog posted there by all of the members of Class 14. Tell me a little bit about what it was like blogging for that. Well, first of all, Africa, South Africa was a remarkable trip and, and being the conduit there to see all these things that you've never seen before and to be that, that just the, the information Super highway, if you will, yeah. the, the conduit to get that information out there was remarkable. Uh, I got to give a lot of credit to Jim Monroe, who took many of the pictures that you'll see on the blog. Uh, it's just a fascinating, fascinating trip. I mean, when you enter in a truck and uh, a rhino is like 10 feet away from you, <laughs> there's just nothing like that in the world. But speaking of rhinos, Kristen, ask me about the big five, because that, that's coming up next week. Tell me about the big five, AJ. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Great. The Big Five, you go to Kruger National Park, everyone wants to know about the Big Five. The Big Five are elephants, rhinoceros, Cape buffalo, leopards, and the elusive lion. I'm so Ooh. glad that I asked you about it. Yes, now. yes, but we have got lots of pictures from Kruger National Park, all the wildlife you can shake a stick at. You've got to tune in next week, and you've also got to go on to twilighttv.org to mm -hmm. check out some of those great pictures that are on that blog. Well, AJ Sabine, looking forward to the future reports. Thank you very much.